Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this thumbnail using Microsoft PowerPoint. So basically how I do all my video, I'm sorry, my image editing stuff using Microsoft PowerPoint. So to get started, let's come over here. I've got a, all the different pieces here. The ultimate goal is to get to this finished product. The way I did this, I first start off by getting a image like this, I use zoom and I will basically remove my background and I'll use a picture of just a solid color. Uh, by doing that, what it will do for me is it gives me a solid color that it needs to be contrasting from your clothes, your eyes, your hair, whatever, that I can quickly come in, choose, you know, pull it into uh, PowerPoint itself. And if I come up to picture formatting, I can go color, and I can go set transparent color. So by doing that, it now gives me just my floating head here and it, you can make funny faces, do whatever you want. I always recommend make a whole bunch of these images right before you go get your haircut because then you can really have some fun with some crazy looks and such. Um, but the next couple parts is where I really started to have some fun. What I did is I started off by, we're gonna, I like to set this up again in PowerPoint because I can just create a new slide. And I happen to have an image of a light bulb. So I went insert picture, come into all of my stuff here. We'll get pictures here. Actually, this one's still in downloads. And I found this light bulb that I got from a website called Envato Elements. And it starts off looking like this. Now, I got the idea that, hey, I wanted the light bulb to be illuminated, right? Like it's a bright idea. So I needed to create a couple layers of it. Initially, what I was trying to do is we can kind of see here, this is our goal is to make it look like this. But if I just come into this bulb, I can go to picture formatting and I can choose an effect called glow. But see how it gets the floor area as well and it just doesn't really do it as clean as I would like. So what I did instead is I literally just went in, I click on the picture, control C to copy, control V to paste. So I get a duplicate, exact duplicate. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to go crop. And I'm going to crop this image all the way up, basically to right where the glass starts. And I'm going to shrink it in as well. The shrinking is not as important because it didn't do the other clear area but it makes it easier to, to kind of play with. Hit my tab button, and this is all in PC. So I now literally have just a second piece. By doing this, now when I've got my picture format, I go picture effect, glow. Now I've got this bulb, right? That looks like it's glowing. I match up my lines. I usually recommend actually, I'm gonna hit control Z to undo, control Z to undo. I'm going to make sure this is mapped up perfectly so it looks close. Hitting my control, scrolling my mouse wheel to get closer. And you want to make sure, again, that it's like right lined up perfectly because otherwise it's going to look kind of funny. So we're good there. If you're ever questioning if you have the right pain piece or not, you can actually go selection pane on the side here. And this was under the home menu or under picture format. You can choose the different pieces. So I'm choosing the one I want to impact. You can even name them differently, of course. And now if I go picture effect, glow as you saw before, choose the color. You can even make it larger radius or smaller, whichever you'd like to do. But we'll keep it simple and go like that. So the benefit of doing this is now we're getting the look of a bulb that looks, you know, that's glowing. What I'm noticing is my yellow at the bottom here. So if I come up here again, let's go to crop and let's go a little bit higher with our crop and go tab. Now we look better. It looks more like it's a bulb, but I've got the two different pieces. So I want to actually grab both pieces. And this is where the selection pane is kind of nice. You can actually do a couple different ways. If you hit your home button at the beginning, go back over here to where it's select under editing and go select all. Once you've done that, go picture format and then go group. This will make it to where both of these are combined together. I can right click, I copy, then I go back to my home button and I'm gonna create a new slide. 
every time I'm creating these different layers, I get my layers put together the way I want them. I copy it and then I paste and I use the second option, which means I only have one version. Now, if I do control Z to undo, if I go to paste again, and if I just use like a standard control V, you're going to see, I still have all these grouped pieces. I don't want those pieces. I want them stuck together. So again, it's like paste the value is really kind of the goal. So now this is one single piece that's going to stay together, move around as I want it to do. I would from here, I'll probably crop down the sizing just because there's no reason to have a lot of extra space for no, uh, that's not needed. Hit tab to get that where I want it. I can now hit control C to copy, come back up here to my other one, control V, and I can place it where I want, shrink it down as needed. Okay. And position it. Now, let's see if we can find who's ringing us real quick here. So we'll go back to the project we were on here. So now I've got this look, I've got the bulb there. And the next thing I want to do now is that same idea where I'm going to go select all. And I'm going to want to, I actually like to scroll out. So I'm going to hit that control button again and scroll the wheel on my mouse to go further out. If you notice, this bigger image is actually hanging over the side. So I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to right click and crop so I can bring it in where I want it. And I might as well actually bring it in a little bit further. Hit tab. I'm going to move this all center because if you're making these images and you plan to use it on Facebook, it's going to squeeze it in anyway. So you want to be paying attention to that. And then anytime you're cropping an image, one of the things you want to do is click on the image. You go back to your picture format and you want to do compress picture. What this will do is it's going to actually go in. You can do the default resolution and it gets, it really trims off all the stuff that you cropped before. Otherwise it sits there and it stays bloated until you do that part of it. The reason I'm doing this and putting it all center is again, by going from the home, select all, we're going to go control C to copy new slide blank, come into here, click once, right click, paste this. This now makes it to where these two pieces are another single layer together. And then the last thing I want to do is actually go in and we're going to do an insert, do a shape square here, take it to the same size. I actually want to change how this is filled. So I'm going to go shape fill and well, first we'll make sure it's kind of seen. I'm going to go send to back. So now I'm getting the contrasting colors to make things look a little bit different. You can change this color to match to whatever you would like very easily. You can kind of play with them a bit, see what's going to look good. Um, we'll do this one different and do it like this this time. I think before I did this one. And then you also can go shape outline and remove the outline, or you can make an outline wider, like I could go thicker and a different color if I wanted, or just no outline whatsoever. Um, for me, once you have this set up and we've got these two pieces, if I come back up to my picture formatting, one of the things I always like to do to give more depth to something, and it works usually on a lighter color, is you can choose, matter of fact, let's change this color real quick. Shape format, shape fill, let's go white. We'll come back here. I'm going to go picture format. And if I want to create like a drop shadow on items, I can do so just as I kind of by coming up to these different templated formats. And if you copy and paste, you can layer darkness on top of darkness and I can come back to that. Um, I'm going to real quickly hit control Z just to undo that part. We're going to go back to our shape format on the side here, right? The rectangle. Oops. And let's go shape format shape fill, go to about there. Now we need to add in some words. So if I go insert word art and choose what you've got, and we will type in 
how to use a light box gallery in your blog post. Oops. Obviously that's too long. Come in, squeeze it down, play with it till you find it the way you want it to look, of course. Kind of position it a bit, but we're going to actually click in here, control A to get everything. And now we want to give it that thicker, fuller feel. So I'm going to actually come in, I'm going to change it to be like this type of a setup, but I'm going to change the text fill to a color I want. And I'm going to take the outline and either remove the outline or do the outline the same color so it just becomes a thicker, bolder color. If I, as we can see here, it's kind of overbearing on the images. So because these are combined together, I can shrink it down a bit, bring it over, keep it centered as the point, bring it in. And now we have all of these pieces together. So the last item I would do, select all, control copy, new slide, and paste. And just like that, we now have a brand new image that we can, we've can we set up and you can create a thumbnail from. The last thing that I will usually do if I'm, if I'm trying to do something where I, I need to have a smaller and a larger image like using them in a light box, from PowerPoint, what you can do is again, scroll in. If you get rid of as much of the stuff on the sides here as you can, depends on how big you really need to go. A simple trick, when it's really large like this, if you take the time then to use your snipping tool, new, you can grab all of this with the snipping tool and make sure you're right inside of the line so you don't get borders that pop in automatic. And then come in and go right click, save as. We'll do this is Lightbox 2 save. That's going to give us a larger size image. And if I go control, scroll the mouse again, go smaller, we can do the same thing again. Grab it, save it. And this time I would call it light box to small and we'll hit save. So now when I come and I pull these images up, go right back here, go to Lightbox. If I look at the properties here, this one is 638 by 358. And then this one is 1517 by 852. Now also pay attention to the size where it says 691 by you know, kilobytes versus the 148 kilobytes. The last step I would do with all this stuff before I would be utilizing it is I would go to a new website that will pull up, uh, let's see, pull up here, is resize image. Go to my web tools here, picture editing. It's resizeimage.net. Upload the image. Go to my large one, open. It'll take it a second. It'll pull it up pop it in and I can resize this and re um, and compress it all at the exact same time. So here's my image. If I want to crop this, I could actually grab, drag and crop. Now we're actually going to keep the whole size because it being all centered, when I use it on Facebook, it'll squeeze it in and we can get the whole thumbnail to actually show in Facebook that way on purpose. Um, our size 15, 17, I can go PNG lossless compression because it's still a good size and go resize image. And that 691 kilobytes is automatically dropped to 451. Hit download the image. Now let's take the same thing. Let's do a 50% one, which is good for retina displays. So you can have the smaller and larger. Just click resize image again. And it will shrink it down again. Now, PNG, as it's doing this, PNGs are good to keep a transparent background. In situations like what we're doing right now, 
where you're not actually having a transparent background, we actually have color behind it, then I'd recommend actually going to JPEG. You can still do the normal compression here. I always get away with a good 80% seems fine. And if you'll notice, we're at 120 kilobytes. Now let's go resize again. 21 kilobytes, download the image. All three of these are all in the exact same folder area. So when I come back here, the, the actual name that I had on here, I would come in, go rename, control copy the name, and then hit escape just so I have the appropriate name for it. Then I would open a new folder for my downloads, and you're gonna have all three of them here. And if we do this the same way every time, we know that the first one we did, let's go rename, control V, lightbox two, large, tab, control V. This one here would be, actually the first one was a JPEG, but so this one's actually the uh, large one. And then this one should be control V, the small one. And really all I was doing is making it a little bit faster to grab the names, grab each of these items, cut, go back to my old folder here, have my compressed images, and then I would paste them in. So I can keep everything organized. So now if I look at these, we've got our Lightbox 2, 759. So this actually may have been the small one, 120. And then this one is the larger, um, I just named them wrong, at 450. And then the other one, which is 759, 21 kilobytes. So that's how I go through. I create thumbnails, get the images ready, get them shrunk down, and how I basically create different images for my website. So I hope this tutorial also was helpful. And as always, here's wishing you guys a very successful week.